Well, welcome back to video number four in our series on the entity relationship diagramming or conceptual modeling. This series of lectures is based on a textbook by Masri and Navath, Fundamentals of Database Systems, 6th edition. The basic object that the ER model represents is an entity which is a thing in the real world with an independent existence. An entity may be an object with a physical existence. For example, a particular person, car, house, or employee. Or it may be an object with a conceptual existence. For instance, a company, a job, or a university course. Each entity has attributes the particular properties that describe it. A particular entity will have a value for each of its attributes. The attribute values that describe each entity become a major part of the data stored in the database. A database usually contains groups of entities that are similar. For example, a company employing hundreds of employees may want to store similar information concerning each of these employees. These employee entities share the same attributes, but each entity has its own value or values for each of those attributes. An entity type contains a collection or set of entities that have the same attribute. For example, there are multiple students maintained in the student entity or multiple courses in the course entity. Each entity type in the database is described by its name and its attributes. The collection of all entities of a particular entity type in the database at any point in time is called an entity set. The entity set is usually referred to by using the same name as the entity type. An entity type is represented in the ER diagram as a rectangular box enclosing the entity type name. Here you see the employee entity, the department entity, and the dependent entity. Attribute names are enclosed in ovals and are attached to their entity by straight lines. Composite attributes are attached to their component attributes by straight lines. Multivalued attributes are displayed in double ovals. So we, here we see the department entity and apparently this department is located in multiple locations. Here we see the employee entity, and the employee has a name, which consists of a first name, middle initial, and last name. The collection of entities of a particular entity type is grouped into an entity set, which is also called the extension of the entity type. An important constraint on the entities of an entity type is the key or uniqueness constraint on the attributes. An entity usually has one or more values that are distinct for each individual entity in the entity set. Such an attribute is called a key attribute and its values can be used to identify each entity uniquely. Sometimes several attributes form a key, meaning that the combination of the attribute values must be distinct for each entity. For example, take a look at our de dependent entity. It contains five attributes, relationship, birth date, sex, employee, and dependent name. None of these alone could be used as a unique key because any of these could be duplicated in the entity set. 
even the dependent name. There could be multiple dependents with the same name. We couldn't use employee because the employee could have multiple dependents. Obviously, there are going to be multiple boys and multiple girls or men and women, and there could be multiple people born on the same date and the same way with relationship. However, if we combine dependent name, employee, and birth date, those three attributes together could be used to uniquely identify one dependent. That would be a composite key. Notice that such a composite key must be minimal. That is, all component attributes must be included in the composite attribute to have the uniqueness property. Superfluous attributes must not be included in the key. In ER diagramic notation, each key attribute has its name underlined inside the oval. Specifying that an attribute is a key of an entity type means that the preceding uniqueness property must hold for every entity set of the entity type. Therefore, it is a constraint that prohibits any two entities from having the same value for the key attribute at the same time. An entity type may also have no key, in which case it is called a weak entity type. This dependent entity would be an example of a weak entity. And by defining these three attributes as a unique key, we are satisfying the requirement that the primary key be defined for every entity. In the case of a weak entity, the primary key may consist of two or more attributes that make up the entity. Each simple attribute of an entity type is associated with a value set or a domain of values, which specifies the set of values that may be assigned to that attribute for each individual entity. For example, if the range of ages allowed for employees is between 60 and 70, we can specify the value set of the age attribute of employee to be a set of integer numbers between 16 and 70. Similarly, we can specify the value set for the name attribute to be a set of strings of alphabetic characters separated by blank characters and so on. Value sets are not displayed in ER diagrams and are typically specified using the basic data types available in most programming languages, such as an integer or string, boolean, float, and so on. Those of us who have been working in SQL are already familiar with how these data types can be defined. Additional database types to represent common database types such as date and time and other concepts are also employed. Well, I think that's enough for this video. Since we spent such a great deal of time discussing entities, let's make entity the mystery word. Go ahead and submit it. And when you're ready, come on back and we'll proceed to the next video in the series on ER diagramming or conceptual modeling.